if we ask a random audience to define entrepreneurship, most would say risk takers. And yet, hearing you talk, you're making it sound the opposite, which is, so the best entrepreneurs are the ones that take as little risk as possible, setting experiments, fail fast, move on to the next one. So why have we been fooled into thinking that it's about the craziest risk possible when you're making it sound it's the opposite? No? Well, I think it's important to also say, or, or to articulate, and I think it's a really important point, which is um, the way the way fast learning needs to, 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 the context of fast learning is actually related to product. The mission, like it's not about changing your mission every five minutes. So on some level, you know, in terms of sort of the, the, the entrepreneur as risk taker, you know, depending on what your mission is, there is big risk or like that's the big thing you're trying to do. But I do think increasingly um, understanding in the context of like what constraints that you're putting in place, um, it's not about big risks because the, the problem is that the world has just gotten so fast and complex that your probability of success is already low and then it goes lower the longer you wait to put out the big product. And if you look at actually most innovation, it, it, it comes from two things. It comes from density of people, um, and it comes from basically people in it innovating to the adjacent. It's, oh, I started here. Oh, that's really interesting. This thing over here looks, looks like something we should actually experiment with next, and then the next jump, and then the next jump, and then the next jump. So I would say that the risk in lifestyle as an entrepreneur is huge, you know, and, and you know, a lot of times it's really fun when you're focused on the idea, and a lot of times it's really not fun when you're actually in the process of slogging it out to realize, from an execution perspective, your idea. But I, you know, I stand fast at the people who I see winning today in Silicon Valley, and the entrepreneurs that I respect the most are not the ones who are creating um, personas around them uh, of like, you know, the, the, the um, profit from on high, but it's really the people that are bringing together. There's, there's, a, there's a guy in Silicon Valley who I, I just, I think the world of, and he has basically spent the last 15 years building network effects businesses, building marketplaces. And he and, and his, his partner uh, about a month ago invited 100 people to the Women's Club of Palo Alto uh, and organized a day long off the record, you know, no, nobody was tweeting about it or, or posting it to Facebook, sharing of information. And I was just struck by the fact that in that room, I saw the future. And the future was also looked a lot like the past. It wasn't that profit sitting on high. It was a room that looked a lot more like this with people talking openly, with people sharing their challenges, but also the things that they were finding w were working. For example, one of the structures of the day was um, uh, uh, two and one. So two things that worked and one thing that didn't. <laughs> and I would even encourage you guys over lunch, like if you were to sit down at a table and instead of sort of the small talk, Small talk's great, don't get me wrong, but if you actually had five people and actually shared that, two things that are working for you right now and one thing that's not, your table, your hour at lunch, you will learn more in that period of time than anything that you can learn when you're giving your standard pitch. And at least this is a problem in Silicon Valley, which is if you ask somebody how they're doing, there's two answers you get. Oh my God, I'm so busy. Uh, and then the second one is, we are killing it. Like, I mean, if I, like, I am so busy because I am drinking out of the fire hose of amazing success, and I just don't even know what to do because we're so successful. Those are really in uninteresting conversations relative to what I believe we're seeing is a community of entrepreneurs, a community of learners, a community of people who are sharing what's working, what's not working, and how to get better. 
And I think that that's why things are happening so much faster and why you're seeing breakout successes to a, a level of scale that you haven't seen before. It's not the profit. It's not the individual who sits in their room by themselves coming up with you know, a beautiful design that mirrors historical design. I think you're making fun of me for the very first things I said to you this morning was, I've been very busy and I'm killing it, so no, I, I apologize. I, I get to speak to, just pertaining back to your, your question about you know, risk taking and, and uh, have, you been, have you been lied to. The, um, I, I get to speak to groups of MBAs at, at Stanford uh, often. There's a marketing class I go back you know, about every semester and go back and it's really a panel discussion with alums about you know, what they've learned from you know, entrepreneurship and that, you know, that sort of thing. It's interesting and, and at some point in the discussion, you know, I, I will mention to all of them is like, look, you guys are all set perfectly to be entrepreneurs. You are um, uh, young, most of you are unmarried, you, don't, you really don't have anything holding you down, you have this great credential, you're all very smart, go start something. And if it doesn't work out, then go try starting something else. But the, the risks are fairly, and I, I look at the discomfort, like the twisting in the room as they're trying, because they've all you know, got great jobs at McKinsey and stuff. And what I tell them is that uh, MBAs are, are typical of very bright people in that they, they overweight risk in the near term and they underweight long term risk. So they are more concerned about their, you know, I don't know, Thirty thousand dollars in student loans, or can they keep their apartment for another year? Or uh, this 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 guy I just started dating, and they overweight the risk of that versus the long term risk of not taking a huge risk now and the potential financial, emotional, and professional and personal payout from from success. Um, and so the real, I, I think, what it is is that entrepreneurs have a much more finely tuned uh, sense of long versus short term risk. Uh, which to the rest of the world looks like risk-taking behavior. Um, and so I think it's more of a perception issue than anything else. I, f I firmly believe that.